Welcome back to another episode. I can't believe it, we're actually on to Video Game Memories Episode 2. And it gives me just the opportunity to kind of revisit the past and uh, look back in some, you know, amazing old memories that I have when I was a kid. Now, this is kind of a funny one because on my street I had, there, there were so many kids my age and we were all playing video games and doing all this kinds of thing. But, isn't this always the case? There's always one kid on every street that gets the, all the cool stuff. They get you know the brand new bike or you know, like the coolest shoes or whatever, and they're cons they consistently always get the stuff. Well, I had a guy who lived down my road who got all the coolest video games, you know, weeks if not months ahead of everybody else, and uh, I think I was the only one on the street that was really pissed off about it. I was super jealous about it. It's really really funny, but. I came, you know, I would always go over to his house and he would be playing the latest, greatest game. And I was just like, God damn it, how do you already have this? And this is kind of, you know, back then you kind of walked into a video game store and it just was out. Where he kind of systematically really knew the release dates. He was really good at it. A lot better than me, obviously. And uh, so I'd go over to his house and I have all these memories of playing these great games. Here's my first one that I remember. And I was. The hype in this game was like the hype of Final Fantasy VII. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you know. Nowadays, I'm just trying to relate to something else. That game magazines were talking about it. It was the be-all next-generation RPG on a 16-bit system, a 16-bit system that everybody had, the Sega Genesis, and that was Fantasy Star 2. Wow, what a fantastic game! Well, it was for him, anyways, because he had it before me, and I was so frustrated. I. I would go over there and he, I, I was like, how do you have this game already? And his dad did a lot of traveling for business and uh, happened to bring Fantasy Star to home from a business trip. So he had to slow down to the States and got it. And you know, in Canada, we, we sometimes get you know games a week later, which is a real pain in the ass. So he was playing Fantasy Star 2 and I was just like, God damn it. You know, and every day I'd go over there and get tortured and uh, he'd show me different things in the game and all the music and all that and man, I have so many memories of just sitting on his couch watching him play video games. It's really funny, but Fantasy Star 2, man, that's that's where I first saw it and I was just like, wow, I gotta have this game. And obviously I didn't get it for a long time after that. Thanks, parents. The next big memory I have was... Um, I, we really got into RPGs, and he was a huge, uh, you know, fan of RPGs as well. And uh, and again, he got something that I was reading about in uh, you know some Sega magazines at the time that you know were out, and they were announcing this one game. Obviously, he gets it, Sword of Vermilion. Wow, what a game! And kind of like Fantasy Star, it actually comes with a, a hint book. Uh, Fantasy Star is in here, but yeah, it came with a really big hint book. Uh, it was very cool. You don't really see that with games anymore. But this game was amazing. It was an overhead game. It was Yu Suzuki's first RPG, if anybody knows that. Uh, Yu Suzuki, uh, the guy who went on to, you know, who made Space Harrier, who also went on to make Shenmue and Virtual Fighter. And this was his kind of first RPG and his only RPG. And it's a unique blend of many different kinds of, kinds of genres. You kind of see a lot of Fantasy Star 1 there in the, the 3D dungeons that they have. Uh, basically, the entire overworld is 3D dungeons. And then when you walk into a town, then it's overhead. It's really unusual. But when you get into battle, again we go back to overhead. And uh, yeah, I spent many, many uh, months watching him play this game, leveling up, and uh, it was cool seeing boss battles, you know, because it'd actually go to a side view for that, and uh, you'd, you know, and I remember in one level you'd be fighting a dragon and all that. So, and also the big memory I have about playing this in his basement was when he first turned it on for me. I walked in and he's like, check out Sword of Vermilion. And he clicked on the power switch and it started and you know, like, you know, it's such an epic opening. You know, lightning strikes the sword and you know, the, the music is just so powerful. And afterwards I was just like, whoa man, I was like some kid out of the Sega CD commercial, you know, blown away type of thing. And then the game began and the game was good, but man, that opening blew me away. And actually a lot of people haven't seen this. This is, this is actually the Japanese version of uh, Vermilion. So I'll do a close up of that. Very, very cool. And I don't think it ever did that well, sadly, because we never got a sort of Vermilion 2. Man, memories. Oh my God. I remember this one like a, like a knife in the heart. <laughs> Going over to his place, the Super Nintendo had just come out. We were all waiting for this game. I happened to just be walking by his house. I thought, oh, I'll see how Andrew's doing. I knock on the door. And his mom's like, oh, Andrew's busy. He's in, he's in, you know, downstairs in his room playing a game. I'm like, oh, really? She's like, yeah, you can go downstairs if you want. I'm like, absolutely. I went downstairs. What's the guy playing? 
Final Fantasy 2. Oh my god. Now, I was blown away seeing these games, but when it, the Super Nintendo came out with its graphical look, and I was a huge Final Fantasy 1 uh, f fanatic, as you, you know, I explained in my last Video Game Memories uh, episode. So when I saw number 2 in motion, wow, with the graphics and, and the, the sound and just the storyline that was uh, developing in number 2, I just sat there and I was just like, wow, you know? And it's funny, he actually had the game for about four days before that. He never told me. He was that much of an asshole. <laughs> So, I got to experience and see Final Fantasy 2 again from sitting on the couch, kind of. I eventually got my copy months later. And here's a funny one. I bugged my parents. I went home after seeing this game at this place. I, I went home and I'm like, Mom, Dad, I'm like, and I'm like ranting a mile a minute. I'm like, you have to give me Final Fantasy 2. It's the greatest game I've ever seen in my entire life. It's going to change my life. I have to have it right now. And what did they say? No. <laughs> They just said no. It was, I said, come on, I'll take the garbage out every night, I'll, I'll wash the dishes every night. And they said, no. Uh, I, I was just like, man, like, come on, give me a break here. And I think it was, it was just because it was just before Christmas. So anyways, I waited, he eventually finished the game, and I got sloppy seconds on it. And uh, I was basically, basically, if you played Final Fantasy 2, I was basically on the moon, near the end of, you know, that is the end of the game, actually. And my parents th said to me at that point, they had no idea that I was even playing it, they said, Oh, do you still want that Final Fantasy 2 for Christmas? I'm like, that, that's so over, that's so last week, thanks very much. I was just like, why can't you just buy me that game, just, just right when it came out, it, it would have been more special to me, and it would have been a, a, a better video game memory than I have right now. <laughs> My parents were fantastic people. They actually were. Now, here's where things got a little bit better for me. This is funny. Uh, every day I would walk to school with this friend of mine. and We'd walk to high school together. And so, I'd usually just see him at the end of the street and uh, I'd walk to school with him. And, and so that morning he wasn't there. I'm like, well, that's awfully strange. I went to school and I'm like, you know what? I, I don't feel like going to school for the, you know, the rest of the day. So I didn't. And I was walking home, probably about 10, 10.30 in the morning. And I thought, well, I'm going to go see what happened to Andrew and see what's going on with him. So I go knock on the door. There's no answer for ages. Because uh, it is during the school day, right? Finally, after pounding on the door for like 15 minutes, I knew he was there. He comes up, he's like, okay, come in, come in, quick, 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 shut the door. I'm like, why? He goes, I don't want my neighbors to see that I'm home. I'm like, so he leads me in, and I got to see this game. Zelda, A Link to the Past, right when it first came out first day. So I guess what had happened is his mom had bought him the game the night before and they had gone to work the next morning and uh, he woke up to go to school and he's like, he picks this up, Zelda, you know, A Link to the Past or School. Zelda, A Link to the Past or School. Easy decision. I think we know what happened next. So he stayed home for the day and was playing this game. So he was skipping school when I, you know, showed up and I was skipping school too. And I'm like, oh my god, you know, this is fantastic. And I was looking at this game and I had like a tear in my eye. I was the biggest Zelda fan. So to see A Link to the Past on the Super Nintendo was like amazing. I didn't spoil it too much. I didn't want to see this game too much at his place. I, I'm like, screw this. I don't care what the hell happens. I'm going home. I'm, I'm going to beg to my parents. I'm going to, you know, do whatever I can. So I went home and I told my parents, I said, yeah, I said, uh, the classes that I had got canceled for the day. They knew I was lying. They must have known. And so I go into this big rant about how my friends, uh, parents are so nice of them, you know, they had such nice parents to get them this game and, uh, man, it'd be great if my parents were as nice and, uh, it was awesome. And this is, this is a great way to kind of, kind of almost wrap it up in a way is that my dad, I have great memories of my father uh, saying, okay, let's go and get that game. And uh, we got in the car and uh, we drove to what was known as Famcom Games at the time. It was basically a little Nintendo booth in the middle of a mall. And I know they had them in, uh, in Bellis Fair, in, you know, uh, in the States as well. So I walk in there with my dad and I went up and it was really cool. There was this whole display for A Link to the Past and they had a bunch of copies. And it was basically the second day it was released, first second day it was released. and. Uh, so I went over and I, I got my copy of the game and uh, I just remember being so excited about this game. I was just like, oh my god, the new Zelda game, like, oh, I couldn't believe it. And my dad was awesome, he was really cool, I remember we had a really cool drive home, uh, talking about video games and things like that, and uh, we, you know, we came into the house, I went to the basement, into, like I had a whole basement area for you know, where my room was, and I had a TV in there and all that, all that kinds of good stuff, and uh, I put in A Link to the Past, and man, the game began, and holy, 
I mean, you know, some games you overhype to yourself and you put them in and you're like, oh, this isn't as good. This game was, was, was better than the hype. I put it in and, you know, it starts off and it's raining and you leave, you know, your, your house in the game and you go into the castle and the music and, oh my god, I almost get like shivers thinking about it. It's just, it was just such a... It was such a memory. It was so amazing. Uh, Zelda really lived up to the hype, and and then later on with the the light and dark worlds and God the the puzzles in the game. It was wonderful. I I had such a, a great uh, memory playing this game, and uh, I loved it, and I still do. And this is my original copy, and it's pretty good. It's it's held up over the years. It's it's really really mint. It's really really nice. I love it, and uh, yeah, fantastic. It's great, eh? So. Eventually, I almost got a game, you know, the day that my friend did. It was, all, it was a day late, but I was close this one with this one. But isn't it great, guys? It's funny, isn't it, how we always have a guy, as I say, down the street, who usually gets everything before everybody else. Guys, tell me about your memories to do with this. Like, I'd be really curious. Everybody has a guy in their neighborhood who got everything before them. Tell me about the guy who you had in your neighborhood. It'll be really interesting to, to hear. So, anyways, guys, until next time.